Hi everyone, Timothy Dunn here. We're diving right into law number 13 of the 48 laws of power that are written by Mr. Robert Greene. Now law number 13 says, when asking for help, appeal to people's self-interest, never to their mercy or gratitude. That's very interesting. If you need to turn to an ally for help, do not bother to remind him of your past assistance and good deeds. He will find a way to ignore you. Instead, uncover something in your request or in your alliance with him that will benefit him and emphasize it out of all proportion. He will respond enthusiastically when he sees something to be gained for himself. Now this is really interesting because many times we have to build a coalition or we have to build consensus when we get things done at work. And if we go back to a long-term friend or an ally that we've uh, been through thick and thin, a lot of times we rely on the friendship or the past or uh, something that's recently happened to get them to move in our direction on faith. And what this chapter is saying is that a lot of times what they recall as the past isn't what we recall as the past. And a lot of times what we have to do is make sure that we make the business and personal case about what they're going to benefit in line with what the project is. You can't say, come on, for old time's sake, I need you to stick your neck out and I need you to help me with this. You're going to have to find out exactly how things are going to roll out for that individual to make sure that they benefit and uh, show them all the uh, points uh, that they're going to enjoy once the project comes about. It says here that many times the individual may become resentful if you continue to go back on the past and you don't come up with anything new or if there's nothing to go forward with, that individual may actually resent your recollection of the past because you're putting more stock into it than uh, really needs to be. What you've got to do is if you're going to develop this relationship and if they're a strong ally, you always have to think of the mutual benefit of each party that's involved, especially if there's risk. Because if there's risk, um, you know, if they become unemployed or they get knocked down a few pegs, the past isn't going to help them at all. So you always want to make sure to think outside the box with their interests in mind. Now, if you're in a point of leadership, one of the things that you're always going to be doing is asking for help. And so therefore, you need to get a thing that's called buy-in. And buy-in is nothing more than selling the idea to the individual that's going to help you accomplish this. And all great leaders have the ability to get buy-in or to garner that emotional investment into what they see as the vision for the future. And even if you're a mom at home, if you have to... Uh, get something done or uh, if you've got to get through lunch without uh, uh, pea soup all over the uh, wall, then you have to do a sales job on your target to make sure that they understand that there's benefit to them cooperating with you. The same thing happens in business. Now many leaders don't become great leaders because what they do is they appeal to the selflessness of the individual. And what that means is this individual, you're expecting them just to give, them them, uh, give of themselves and to uh, go ahead and go along with what you're talking about simply because um, th that's just in their nature. Well, I'm sorry, it's not. You always have to put a benefit analysis out there so that individual is acting out of self-preservation and they're acting out of uh, accumulation for themselves, not just for an affinity for you. Now, the reversal of this principle is very interesting. It talks about going to those people that are benefactors, that are charitable or merciful, not because they want to be, but because they use that as a, uh, a point of gaining power for themselves. You've got to be very careful with them. It says here that uh, you must distinguish the differences among powerful people and figure out what makes them tick. When they ooze greed, do not appeal to their charity. When they want to look charitable and noble, do not appeal to their greed. So you have to be very careful and weigh the project. If the project cannot get done without the blessing or the financial help or the uh, interference of someone, especially someone that never does anything for free and they always have an agenda, you want to step back and analyze this. If I choose to not do this project, how badly is that going to hurt me? And if I go forward with this project and now I'm endeared to this individual, I've actually given them some power, how much has that hurt me? So you want to make sure that you weigh this so that you're not accidentally moving things forward in a career momentum fashion, but then you're turning around and you're hurting yourself because you've aligned your, yourself with someone that you owe a favor to that's actually going to hinder you more down the line. So always be very careful of that. 
And that's a very difficult thing, especially as leadership goes. You want to find the quickest, easiest way to make sure that you move forward and get an accomplished task on the table and done so you can move past it. But then if someone is always looking for something in return, let's say you have an employee that says, okay, I'll do this, but I want to raise, or <clears throat> I want to, uh, uh, you know, I'll help you with this, but this is what I want. I want that corner office, or I want a new chair or a new desk. In these situations, or worse yet, if it's somebody from another department that says you're going to owe me one and you know they're not quite the uh, uh, character type that you think you should uh, be you know, hanging out with, you want to be very careful. Keep mental notes because eventually uh, it's going to come back to roost. And there's no better example than our existing political system with all of the politicians. Once they get to a specific place, they owe so many people that have such a wrong agenda that it ends up casting a light on them. And all the good work that they've done or they, uh, the service that they've done up until that point is completely gone because now they have become a servant to people that are not necessarily the most scrupulous. So always be careful uh, about that. Anyway, that's law number 13. We'll get into law number 14 here soon. Again, thank you so much for taking the journey. Stay in touch. Uh, this is going to be great. We're more than 25% done. And uh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting a lot out of this. So thank you very much for being with me.